Hello there Star Wars fans and welcome back to another RebelScum.com video and today I have the pleasure of being joined by Mr. Zack from Gentle Giant. We have had the absolute privilege to review various Gentle Giant pieces for viewer viewing pleasure, mostly busts and maquettes, but there's a lot more to Gentle Giant than just busts and maquettes. They do giant jumbo figures. They do larger busts, aside from their mini busts that we typically review. And then they do these very, very other actionable pieces. Check those out. And a lot of these, you're seeing for the first time, probably. Especially if you didn't come down to Celebration with us this weekend. So, Zach, tell us a little bit about Gentle Giant. What got Gentle Giant started? And was it inspired mainly by Star Wars? Because I know you guys do other stuff, too. Uh, you know, um, General Giant Studios uh, was a 3D development uh, firm that was working with different studios uh, to scan stuff at, on site at different uh, movie screen and movie pr uh, production sites. Um, and they decided to get into the business of making product um, about 20 years ago. Uh, their first Star Wars items were for Attack of the Clones. They did busts for Attack of the Clones. Um, and uh, they've been making those one six scale busts for the past 20 years. And um, uh, I don't believe I don't believe Star Wars was the very first item they made, but it was one of the first items they made. So they've been making busts and statues for 20 years. Um, around 2019, General uh, Giant Studios was looking to move on to other stuff. So uh, Diamond Select Toys came in and bought General Giant Limited. Um, so now we are overseeing all production and manufacturing of all the new uh, Star Wars items for General Giant Limited. Um, and uh, we've been doing that for about three years, and I think the response has been pretty good. Uh, we've managed to get out a lot of uh, great new characters and uh, some great new versions of old characters. And, uh, yeah, uh, we've got some, a lot of the same people who worked on the General Giant uh, Limited under General Giant Studios are still working for DST today. So, um, so it's, it's a, there's a lot of continuity there. And, um, yeah, I think the, the quality of the products is, is getting better and better. It definitely has been getting better and better every single time. Every time I have the privilege of reviewing one of your newer pieces, it's just, wow, it's amazing how they captured the detail in this character this time. And seeing, you know, when you're comparing the various Obi-Wans from over the years, whether it's a prequel Obi-Wan or either this brand new Obi-Wan that you've shown this weekend, but is it necessarily available yet? You can just see how much the work has just improved over the years. Not that it wasn't great from the beginning, but you, you can just see how you guys have developed new te technology over the years, and you're just able to capture those more fine details, especially those cloth details have to be incredibly difficult, I imagine, since you're not working with cloth. You know, it's um, it's interesting. I. I've, wor I've worked with a lot of uh, sculptors who do uh, traditional sculpting, but everything, you know, since the early days of General Giant, obviously they were started by a digital scanning company, so um, everything's been digital over there. We, have, we do some occasional traditional pieces, but for the most part it's all digitally sculpted, and it's so easy in the digital programs to drop in that, uh, that patterning, that uh, texture that you want, and apply it to, you know, big stretches of product, uh, big stretches of material, uh, as opposed to having to do it traditionally and having to you know, actually etch in that, that texture over, a, you know, an entire robe or something like that. So, so doing it digitally actually makes that a lot easier. Um, but it's, um, it's definitely a challenge uh, to, to make it look like real fabric when you're, when you're working in, um, in 3D. So I understand you've been working with Gentle Giant for quite a long time, especially with the Star Wars brand within Gentle Giant, which I would say is probably the majority of what Gentle Giant does, um, at, at least from what I've seen. Yes. And what what brought you into working on Star Wars so closely with General Giant? Where where did the Star Wars love start for Zach? Uh, I'm I may not look it, but I'm, I'm I'm a little young for Star Wars. I was born in '77, so I didn't really get into it on the first round. Everybody's like, I was there in '77. I'm like, I was technically there. You're present. I was, I was present. Uh, I was born May 16th, 1977, and the uh, the um, so I didn't really get into it when I was a kid. I had one figure. I had Admiral Akbar, and uh, but I got back into it when they did this. I watched it on VHS. Uh, I went to the screenings when they brought it back to the theaters, and you know, in my teens and twenties, 
Uh, I went to all the prequels, I went to all the sequels. Um, and uh, yeah, I, you know, I would not say I'm the hugest Star Wars fan in the world, but I am, I am definitely a casual Star Wars fan across the board. I used to collect all the action figures, and, um, and I love all the pieces that we do for General Giant. I try to snag my favorites every now and again. I don't have all of them, but every now and then I'm like, I, I need to get one of those for myself because that's just too cool. Um, so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely a, a casual Star Wars fan, but I know all the na characters' names because I used to work for a magazine that covered all the action figures. So I know who Alors Maydak is. I know who... Um, uh, Pagetti Rook is. I know all these characters' names that I that that maybe the casual Star you, the normal casual Star Wars fan probably doesn't know. I was about know. to say yeah. casual Star Wars <laughs> fans don't know Alors Maddox's name or Pagetti Rook, Rook's names. I know he's it, also a Duros alien, so that's I got that going for me now. See, that's, I that's not, not know, casual knowledge. I did not know that he had two different types of hands, so we were making two different sets of hands for him. One, just regular hands, gloved hands holding a drink, and then we're making his big creepy blue alien hands. Uh, I guess they appeared two different ways in two different scenes or something like that. Um, I'm not that hardcore, but uh, but our designers and our, our sculptors are that hardcore because they know all this stuff backwards and forwards. And and see, that's some of the things I cover when when we actually review some of your products is those swappable hands, those swappable accessories. Um, I kept hammering the point when um, I was reviewing the First Order Stormtroopers you had sent me. So you sent me um, the regular First Order Stormtrooper uh, bust set mm -hmm. as well as the officer set. Mm -hmm. And I was talking about in those videos, I was like, look, for those of you who like to collect these busts, they do such an awesome job by including these extra hands and accessories that they probably unintentionally created an army builder here. And I was hammering home the, the concept of army building busts, <laughs> which is something you can very easily do with a lot of the gentle giant collectible busts. And it's something that hasn't stopped since y'all have done trooper busts especially, which I think is really cool. But it, 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 I just that's one of the things I love about this brand is y'all's attention to detail. It's, it's the, the thinking of, well, yeah, this character had different hands in this other shot, so heck, why not just do those two and throw them in? Nobody asked for it, but you guys went ahead and did the work anyway, and there's always gonna there always would have been that one fan out there somewhere who would have been mm -hmm. like, Well, he had different hands in this scene, why didn't they do that if y'all didn't do it, right? So it's it's just always cool how you guys are so diligent about including those extra accessories when they count and we, we love it every time. Now, as I understand it, you guys have new stuff that you're showcasing other than the Obi-Wan I aforementioned. Um, what, what other things are you guys showing off that might not be available for pre-order yet, but will be soon? Uh, one of the big ones is this Wampa bust, um, literally a big one. It's, we're not sure how much it's going to cost to produce, but um, we're showing it off for the very first time here at the show, and we're not sure, you know, timeline or anything like that. But we wanted people to see it, and this was the place to show it off. So we got this nice big Wampa bust right here. This is one six scale. Uh, we've got a, a new bust of Luke with Yoda on his back, which is very cool. Um, uh, the Duros alien, Alors Maedek, like I mentioned. Behind Alors Maedek, you can see Pre Vizsla, uh, oh. who we're showing off for the very first time, and he came out that, really amazing. That head sculpt looks absolutely amazing. Yeah, it came out really great. That's one of our realistic takes on the animated characters. We do have an animated line of busts, like one seventh scale, a little bit smaller, that are animated style, but um, we do a lot of busts that are the animated characters done in a realistic style I, um, to go with the rest of your one sixth collection. I honestly can't think of another realistic take on Pre Vizsla at this moment. I think that might be, at least as of this moment, I think that might be the only realistic interpretation of what Pre, Pre Vizsla's face looks like. Awesome, awesome. I just, again, I don't know where it's going to be offered, but um, we're going to, it's, I think we have a price down there. That price is probably inaccurate as well. Um, but uh, when it comes out, it's, uh, it's hopefully going to be available for everybody to get. And, um, Hopefully nobody will have any trouble getting it who wants a pre -vizsla. Now, you also have some statues down here mm -hmm. as well. So um, the mall is already available for pre-order, but it looks like you guys have a companion piece that's going to be coming out for that mall here very soon. Yes, these are our 1-6 scale uh, mall and uh, Ahsoka Tano. And um, the mall is up for pre-order now. And um, if you pre-order the mall then you are automatically added to a list to be one of the first people of, uh, of, um, who have the option to order Ahsoka. Um, it's not re restricted, but it is uh, first come, first serve. These are limited editions of 1,000 pieces each. So uh, if you order them all, then you have first dibs on Ahsoka. Um, so uh, I think we're going to offer Ahsoka just as soon as Darth Maul ships, and I think he's getting pretty close. 
Oh, I'm very excited. Those pieces look absolutely amazing. All right, what do we have in the next showcase? So I know we have some new busts over here as well. You mentioned the OB-1 was new earlier. What else do we have that might be coming out new in this case? Uh, we've shown all of these uh, Legends in Three Dimensions busts before. That's what we call our one-half scale bust line. Um, so these have all been seen before, but they're all incredibly beautiful pieces. I'm a big fan of the Legends in 3D line because uh, you could just get so much more detail into these one-half scale busts than you can into a one-sixth or a one-seventh. Um, so those are not new, but they're very awesome. This Yoda uh, is not new, but it's very awesome too. Uh, the new pieces in this case are the jumbos uh, down here on the bottom. We've got a jumbo um, Grand Admiral Thrawn that we're showing for the very first time. Um, I believe he's going to be available before the end of the year, so keep an eye out for that. If you're not signed up for the mailing list on the website, you should definitely do that because you get information about all the new pre-orders. Uh, and then uh, next to him is um, Luke in his X-Wing gear, and that's actually going to be a removable helmet, Luke. And he comes with a bunch of accessories, including a blaster and a couple of different lightsabers. So, I heard Dev talking about this one the other day, and... It, it, he was talking about how the idea of the removable helmet Luke came up, and he was like, I was sitting there playing with my Luke, and I was like, why, how, why can't I take his helmet off? You know, why, why is that not an option here? So that's why he, you guys decided to do the Jumbo, gi the Jumbo Giant, the Gentle Giant Jumbo removable helmet X-Wing pilot Luke, because, you know, <clears throat> small confession time, for many years... I thought that the uh, the visor part on the helmet was hair. <laughs> and so when people are like, hey, here's my X-Wing pilot Luke, I'm like, yeah, but it looks nothing like Luke. He doesn't have brown hair. <laughs> so for, a long, for the longest time, I thought that X-Wing pilot Luke was not actually Luke because he had brown hair when it was actually the visor. Um, okay, so X-Wing pilot Luke those and Thrawn are upcoming figures that you yes. have revealed for the first time this weekend. Yes, first but time. I see a couple of other really cool characters that look similar to Luke and Vader that look really incredible. Tell me about those. Uh, those are our concept uh, versions of Luke and Vader. Uh, we're doing a line of jumbos based on the Ralph McQuarrie concept art. So um, we've got Darth Vader in a sort of a blue color um, with the light blue lightsaber. And um, we've got Luke in his, uh, gas, in his, uh, ga his um, oxygen mask uh, with a white lightsaber. And those are both um, up for pre-order now. And I believe those will be the next to ship, if I'm not mistaken. So those should be coming out this summer. Oh, very nice. I can't wait to, to see those. I absolutely love the Roth McQuarrie stuff. And I'm so excited that as a fan of both Star Wars and Roth McQuarrie's concept art of Star Wars for so many years, that were so many more companies that have the Star Wars license are doing more and more Ralph McQuarrie stuff. You guys have been, you know, have, have done the first new action figures of it because of your jumbos, and then Hasbro recently announced Black Series figures for it, which is really exciting too. Oh, that's great. So it's it's just so exciting that we're starting to get more and more Ralph McQuarrie concept art love, where we're all collecting other stuff and it's like okay you know you're starting to wind down you're thinking you're just about done and maybe you're just going to wait for what comes out next and then boom <laughs> Ralph McQuarrie jumbos you're not done yet now now you have a whole nother set that you got to collect because you can't just stop with Vader and Luke you're going to have to collect the jumbo Obi-Wan when you guys probably do it the jumbo Yoda when you guys probably do it and so on and so forth because it, it's just gonna keep the fans busy. Yeah, I think I think these have done well, those two. So um, we do have others in the works that we're going to be rolling out uh, in the near future. Um, I've definitely seen the designs for them; they look really great. Um, but yeah, we we love the Macquarie stuff. We've got a premier um, Macquarie Stormtrooper statue coming mm -hmm. out. That's going to be it's a premier guild gift for this year. So that's going to be coming out. I think probably uh, probably by the end of this year, and then. Um, uh, we've got some other uh, Macquarie stuff planned, which is going to be really cool. We always do a Macquarie bust every year um, for San Diego. So we're, um, I don't know if we're going to do one this year, but we do have Mac more Macquarie busts in the works as well. Awesome. And then we have one more showcase of new sure. stuff to look at. So what's all upcoming out of here? Uh, so um, this is a new statue we're showing off, the Premier Collection uh, Tuscan Raider. Um, he comes with interchangeable hands. So you can have him holding his, um, his rifle or his uh, Gurphy stick. And um, let's see, what else do we have? Down here on this shelf, we've got um, our first look at the Leia and Bausch disguise. Uh, she comes with the interchangeable head 
uh, so you can have the mask, the helmet or the non-helmet, and then the hand can hold the helmet or the thermal detonator. I love when you do those, when y'all when y'all do the swappable heads with the helmet and then holding the helmet. And every single time I finish one of those reviews, I always do at least one promo photo where they have both the helmet on and they're holding the helmet. <laughs> I, I just can't ever resist to do it. Just. Just because I can. That would be that would be a, a pretty amazing photo set of all the ones that we've done that do that. We have a uh, Bo Katan coming up that's pretty cool that does the same thing. She's flying in her, with a jetpack and she's got a helmet under her arm, but then she also comes with a helmeted head. Oh yeah. Um, so, yeah, that'd be that that's that's that would be pretty funny. I haven't tried that one yet. Next to Leia, you can see um, um, Jackson, uh, who we just debuted yesterday on the live stage um, along with our our friend who's a Jackson cosplayer. Um, and uh, this is going to be uh, upcoming. I'm not sure exactly when this one's shipping, but we wanted to show it off again because it's just, if you're going to show off a Jackson, Star Wars Celebration is where you have to do it. Well, and there's there's not a lot of Jackson merch. There never really has been. No. Um, but he was always n not like a super popular character from the comics, but one of the more popular characters from the original Marvel comics and one that's often overlooked I think so it's kinda nice that very recently we saw his return to comic book pages in the past couple of years and now we're starting to see an uptake in merch he's actually finally getting merch you know Hasbro did a comic pack version of him in their Black Series line and this one I think blows it out of the water because he's in that awesome action poses he's got both of his blasters drawn and he's standing in front of the Dejaric table I absolutely love it I think it looks incredible and I can't wait to, to check it out closer when it's available yeah no it came out great I'd never read a lot of the old Marvel Star Wars comics I had a few of them when I was a kid but um but no he's just such a distinctive looking character and he just jumps out when you look at characters that weren't you know, that they didn't do a lot with. It's like, why, you know, why isn't there more stuff for him? And so hopefully uh, we'll see him on the TV show uh, someday soon. And then you guys still have a number of other busts and pieces that I believe are available now? Uh, everything in this case is up for pre-order. So if you saw something in, in, out of the corner of the screen that uh, you like, definitely go to the website and check it out. We've got a bunch of uh, great statues here. We've got the Luke with Yoda from Mandalorian, the Luke with the Grogu from Mandalorian. We've got the Ahsoka from Mandalorian Season 2. Um, we've got this great uh, Mandalorian with Grogu up there. Um, the Boba Fett on Throne is a really beautiful piece. A um, lot of stuff coming up that's really, really nice. I mean, this case is full of a lot of my favorite pieces. Um, but the next one is always my favorite piece. You know, it's always, it's always the next thing we do, it's like, oh, I can't wait for that one. Oh, I can't wait for that one. All right, but right now, and it doesn't have to be in this showcase, <laughs> what is your favorite piece that you guys have produced? Have produced ever? Oh, gosh. Uh, or, or is currently producing? It doesn't uh, have to be something that doesn't that hasn't been revealed yet. I'm not trying to get new information. I'm just out of stuff that General Giant has produced or is currently producing. What is your favorite piece? Uh, lately, I'm loving the... Um, we did a uh, Legends of 3D bust of Boba Fett. Uh, we have a Book of Boba Fett version, but we also have a classic Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett version. And um, when we found out about this comic storyline that was coming up called uh, War of the Bounty Hunters, uh, we saw that Boba Fett had black armor. And we said, can we please make a Boba Fett in black armor? And they said, yes. So we took our Legends of 3D Empire Strikes Back Boba Fett, and we painted it black. Uh, a lot of different varying types of black, you know, glossy black, matte black, you know, a lot of different shades of black, and um, and it came out amazing. We've got a couple here left at the show, but um, I think it's still available on the website. But it's just a really, really beautiful, striking piece, and the fact that nobody thought to paint Boba Fett black before 2000 and you know 21 or whenever it happened. It's just it like yeah. yeah, it's a, uh, it's just amazing. It's like it's it's such an iconic iconic piece. Um, the bus came out really great and um, hopefully everybody who has a, who's a fan of the storyline has had a chance to see it because um, uh, the writer of the comic book, Charles Soule, just came by and saw it and he's, um, we're going to get him one too. So are you familiar with the story of why he painted his armor black? <laughs> I'll be honest, I just didn't get a chance to read it, uh, but I hear it washes off in the next issue. Pretty much. <laughs> so it was at the beginning of the... Um, of the Bounty Hunter War. It's actually part of the events that kicked off the Bounty Hunter War. So while he, he, while he was on his way to Tatooine, the Carbonite became unstable, so he stopped at Nar Shaddaa to have it fixed. While he was having it fixed, he didn't have enough credits on hand for the guy. Of course, the guy was ringing him because he's a scumbag who lives on Nar Shaddaa, right? Um, 
while he's having it fixed, he hears about um, there's some local fighting going on. So he's like, all right, well, I'm just going to you know, go there, win a fight, get some credits, come back, pay the guy, be done. So he paints his armor black so people don't recognize him since he's got this high value uh, prize, right? Mm -hmm. And enters in the contest under the name of Django Fett. Which was really cool. And then, of right. course, he wins and gets his credits. But at that point, that's when Han gets, stored, gets stolen, and that's what kicks off the Bounty Hunter War. Oh, interesting. I, now i got to go read it. It's, it's a cool read. Um, it's a lot of issues because it, 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 it was their big um, crossover event for all the Star Wars titles at the time. Okay. So it crosses over into um, Darth Vader, regular Star Wars, Star Wars Bounty Hunters, Dr. Aphra, and then... Then there's the Star Wars Bounty Hunter War title. So there's at least five different titles wow. with various issues from different titles that you're going to have to sift together. Or, I mean, I guess I just wait for the trade yeah, paperbacks. Yeah, it's going to be collected soon, so I'll have to get it. But yeah, it's it's definitely worth the read. A lot of cool things happen between a lot of different Bounty Hunters. They, they showcase some of the other Bounty Hunters. I'm just saying, after you read this, we might... we might see some more Bounty Hunters then because there's some cool designs that you guys may not have done yet with this Excellent. from this comic so that's great we love the bounty hunters uh you know it's all the main bounty hunters were probably done as busts uh, many years ago um, before you know diamond select toys came out of the picture uh, we still got some of the statues that we did for some of the bounty hunters they've been selling really well here at the show um but uh anytime a new bounty hunter comes on the scene he obviously gets a, a, a close look from the design team because we're always looking for cool new character designs. Absolutely. Even though there's still plenty to make of the of the old creatures and monsters. We're, like the Weak Way. We're making Weak Way for the first time in the bus line, you know? After this video, um, I'll, when we go around, I'll show you some uh, characters from it that you guys might want to do. Excellent. Awesome. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in with us here at Gentle Giant at Star Wars Celebration 2022. We are on the last day, so it's kind of too late to come out and see these guys now, but... Next time you're at a convention and they're stationed there, which I think your next con is SDCC. San Diego Comic Con, yeah, we'll be there. So they'll be at SDCC later this year. So in case you missed them here at Star Wars Celebration, come hang out with them at SDCC. Buy some busts, buy some statues, get something awesome, get a jumbo or two because they have a wide variety of product. There's something for every collector from General Giant. Whether you collect Star Wars or maybe some other brands. They might have some other brands showcased at SDCC. I know I have an awesome, awesome Megatron bust. It's one of my favorite Megatron pieces that you guys did. Oh, a Diamond Select Toys Megatron bust. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it is so cool. It is so cool. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like and subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss awesome interviews such as this one. Stay tuned for more General Giant sponsored content because we did a bunch of reviews. I know we might still have some to post and there might be more to come in the future. Follow us on social media. Follow them on social media. Go to General Giant's website to see the availability of these pre-orders and ones you may have missed that are still currently available so you don't miss out on them before they're sold out. We'll see you guys later. We'll see you another time. May the force be with all of you, you rebel scum. <laughs>